Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. So today I thought we'd take a look at the evil elements, uh, some of them anyway, that are part of uh, 45's life. Weiselberg, uh, the daughter, the oldest son, maybe even mom. Okay, so this could be a long read today. I've got four people that I want to just touch on today, maybe a dyadic cross for each of them. So the four folks are Weiselberg. The daughter, the oldest son, and finally, mom. So let's see how this all goes. Before I do that, though, I'm going to show you uh, these cards right up front and get that out of the way. So we'll start with the Visconti Tarot. So this is a gilded version of some cards I have that are sort of museum quality, but I mean they're reproductions of, of the original, <coughs> what's believed to be cards that might have been used in the mid-1400s for the um, uh, royal families at the time. Or the influential, I don't know if they were royal, but they certainly were influential at the time. And that was the Sforza Visconti um, family uh, at the time. So what they do is uh, if you're rich, you'd have tarot cards made up for you, painted specifically for you. And they weren't necessarily fortune-telling cards. They were card-playing cards. It was a game that you play with these cards. And then eventually they got uh, sort of uh, used as um, predictive cards. So this is what they look like when they're gilded. Uh, I've got an original set, which are huge cards, and I used them a, a video or two back. But these I like because the cards are cryptic. In a lot of cases, but in this gilded deck, they've got some descriptions on the side here that help me out an awful lot. So I thought you'd like these. I hope they show up well on the camera, but I'm going to use these since they're gilded. We're going to use these for Weiselberg because he has been the fella who's been uh, handling the coin. He's been shuffling the gold around from one account to another for years. He was the brains behind uh, 45's dad's um, manipulation of the uh, sad uh, tax situation we had in place at the time. And so he brought that uh, knowledge on to uh, Fred's son. And he's been the guy and still is the guy, I think, who's, who's running the financial show really uh, over at uh, T-Org. T-Org. So I like that name. I just came up with it this moment. So this is the Visconti Tarot. And that's what I'm going to use for Alan Weiselberg. Set those aside for a moment because now I'm going to show you the Hermetic Tarot. So these are based on the esoteric workings of the secret order of the Golden Dawn. Okay, so these were some of the first cards of the more modern world uh, that were um, uh, put together uh, for divination of members of the secret order of the Golden Dawn. And so what that group did, they encouraged their members to develop tarot cards um, that had meaning for them. And this seems to be one of the... Um, structures that has survived um, the the ages so these are very uh cryptic a little bit they're black and white but again they've got some divination in here and some description that helps you figure out how to use them and i thought these might be good for the oldest daughter and i hate to tell you this i've got some uh fans of that family in my family and one of my nieces by marriage um has actually named her oldest daughter after that uh, oldest daughter of that guy. So there's that. So Hermetic Tarot, that's what those look like. The next pack I'm going to use are the Toth Tarot. And now these cards were developed by a fellow who's uh, called himself, uh, I'm, I'll sure I pronounce this poorly, but uh, Ite Iteya, Iteya, which is actually his name, his actual name in reverse, which is Aliette, Aliette. So this was a French fellow. And he was a famous, famous um, tarot reader at the time for the purpose of divination and fortune telling. And so he just had all sorts of followers. And he took his uh, cards on the road. He developed all sorts of spreads, some of them inv involving 
the entire pack laid out or sometimes more than one pack two or three packs laid out and so these cards are very interesting too and uh, but again they've got some hints on them that help uh, you uh, determine um, the meaning or the divination that maybe you're looking for um, and so I like that of course they're colorful they're old world looking and I thought these might be good for the oldest son you know the namesake junior as it would be so thankfully no one in my family has named their child after him yet 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 I say so here we go with that now the last uh, deck that I'm gonna use is from mama and it seems to me from what I've read that mama was just a huge enabler and uh, kept her eyes blinded to the inequities that were going on and uh, so these cards are great um, probably I shouldn't use them for her because they're such nice cards but it says uh, may you always be on the inner quest may you always be on the inner quest these are designed by Kim Kranz and uh, they're a really terrific uh, bunch of cards the guidebook is a hand uh, the hand-drawn cards are featured here just as they are in the deck with some nice explanations as to the divinations you might uh, want to attribute to them the cards themselves is a box in a box I like to say the inner sanctum and uh, these cards Everything about them is hand-drawn by Kim Kranz, and so let's uh, take a look at those right up front so you can have an idea what these will be like, and we'll use these for mom, mama, and see uh, what they tell us about her. I mean, we may even be lucky enough to tap into her, uh, I don't know if I want to call it evil energy, but certainly cooperative, uh, um, blindsided, uh, blindsighted energy. So we'll see if that does anything. Uh, she may be uh, in uh, a lot of years of cleansing of her soul, so we may not pick up on her. Who knows? But we'll see what comes. They're beautiful cards. They've got some pops of color in them, and I love using them. So the first one we're going to do right now, we're going to use the Visconti uh, Tarot, this gilded pack, uh, to see what this will tell us about hmm, Weiselberg, the accountant. The accountant for T Org and all their subsidiaries. He's the guy that runs the, the show. Um, nothing happens that he doesn't know about. And he's the fellow who uh, 45 consults with when he has a uh, moneyed matter to uh, deal with. And let's face it, his whole life is a transaction. And how sad is that? So we're going to take six cards that look, it even comes out sideways. Gonna take six cards out of here for a dyadic cross for Weiselberg. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. And if we need clarifiers, we'll use these cards to clarify anything that comes up too. But I don't think I don't think that's gonna be the case. We'll see. Dyadic cross for Weiselberg, the accountant. And let's see what this can tell us about his um culpability his partnership his really leadership he may even be um, more uh, actually uh, to blame for for all of these inequities than even um, uh, number 45 but the the fact is that he, he performed his evil deeds uh, with 45's uh, permission and, and and with 45 seeking his guidance so the fault falls on DT but this is for Alan Weiselberg signifier card is this, oh yeah, it's the page. It's the page of cups. This this page is just, you know, the lowest member of the court. He's bringing a chalice, a golden chalice to court uh, to um, to for consideration. And that's exactly what this man did his entire life. He brought his surprise cup of um, very emotional um, ideas to the, uh, the court of all the T's. Um, if you know who I'm talking about. And um, and so that was his role. That continues to be his role. This page is a very, look at the face of this page. This fellow has, even has a very cunning uh, a, a smirk kind of on his face. So this is the signifier card for Weiselberg, the fellow who brings everything to the court for consideration. The challenge to that, oh, is the Seven of Swords. And the Seven of Swords, I've got to kind of dig down 
to remember uh, what the Seven of Swords is all about, though. But swords are truth and justice and rules and law. And yeah, those all sound like challenges to this spell. Truth, justice, rules, and law. Seven of Swords, lots of that in the way of these plans, these uh, emotional actions that this fellow wants to present to the uh, court. The base of this reading, then, is the, <laughs> the Three of Swords, which is heartache. You know, it's disappointment. It's uh, something uh, that you really love is uh, is in danger. That would be this gilded uh, uh, money of this of this deck. So that makes sense. Heartbreak is the is the foundation of everything. The recent past for this is the Eight of Cups, and the Eight of Cups reminds us of uh, a time when we may have to walk away from something. I would say you have to walk away from your passion, from your uh, good judgment, and so it looks like. Uh, that's what we came into this with. The uh, highest uh, aim in the sky for this reading, then, is the Four of Swords, little celebrations. Yeah, this fella is always looking for the little celebrations along the trip in his job. Uh, somebody comes to him and says, hey, we want to do this deal. Uh, how can we uh, get out of paying our taxes? Uh, how can we do this without anybody knowing who, who made the payments? Uh, oh, yeah, we'll do it this way. Ha, ha, ha. That's our little celebration. So that's what we've got here is celebrations, smallish. The likely outcome for our good old buddy uh, A.W. is the five of coins. Oh, no. The five of coins is being left out in the cold. And you tell me that that's not exactly where this fellow is going to be. He knows in this whole debacle that if he doesn't cover his own, you know what, that he is going to get left out to dry in the cold. And I mean, and even his family is now involved in this. So this seems pretty uh, accurate. He brings uh, uh, issues to the court for consideration. He's got tons of rules and judgment and justice that he has to work around. Uh, heartbreak and deceit is the basis of all of this. Um, you're going to have to roll past your emotions uh, to, to get to the answers that they want. Um, smallest celebrations for all these little evil victories that they've had along their, their lengthy career is what's in the sky. And it looks like with the five of coins that poor old um, uh, Weiselberg is going to get left out in the cold in the end. Sounds perfect to me. That sounds exactly like what I would expect for this fellow. Now we said that we talk about the daughter. These cards, the Hermetic Tarot, they can be pretty harsh. And if anybody thinks that that woman uh, isn't exactly the same cut of cloth, isn't cut from exactly the same cloth as her uh, dad, uh, they're sadly mistaken. You know, she uh, was the beautiful one. She's the sexy one. She's all the things that uh, her father likes to pervert. And so, uh, yeah, he would have an admiration for all those qualities that she possesses that he can't possess. And uh, she's not been a very skilled, um, like she has been very skilled in her use of all those qualities. It's just that she hasn't been very transparent at times if you look closely. So we're going to take six cards out of here for her for the uh, Dianic Cross Divination on the daughter. One, two, three, four, five, and finally six. So we'll put these off to the side just in case we need a clarifier. Don't think we will. And we'll see how this shapes up for the daughter. The signifier card for her is the sun. Oh yeah, she is the one who brings light to the situation. When she steps into a room, the whole thing lights up. And that's been her, her biggest asset to this corporation, being the glaring, um, a beautiful um, uh, inspiration that comes into the room and really literally blinds uh, people's uh, uh, vision to what may be going on. And the, the way that this card is described here is called the Lord, which is the ruler, the Lord of the fire of the world, the ruler of the fire of the world. And so that's who she is. She's the sun. She's the blinding light that walks in the room and uh, obscures everyone's uh, vision just long enough for um, uh, DT to take advantage of the situation. The challenge to her as the sun, then, is the king of wands and the, king, the prince of the chariot of fire. The prince 
of the chariot of fire. Uh, f fire is actions and, and movement and plans, and the chariot is bringing those, those forth quickly. And so her challenge has been the prince of the chariot of fire. And who does that sound like to you? Does it sound like dad, the king of wands, the king of action, the king of planning? Yeah, it does to me. So that's been her challenge. The basis of this uh, dyadic cross for the first daughter is the Four of Cups. And um, the Four of Cups uh, in this deck wants to be, this, you know, cups are emotions and passion and wants to be described as the Lord, again, the, the ruler of blended pleasures. The Lord of blended pleasures. That's very interesting. What are you going to blend those pleasures with? Are you Are going to blend them with a little uh, better uh, and then just to make them go down easier? That's the basis of this reading. The recent past for her, then, is the emperor. And so that's the sun of the morning. This card wants to describe the emperor of the sun, as in the uh, child, the male child, the sun of the morning. So she has been like the first, I don't know if she is the oldest child in that group, but she certainly has been um, in the position of a first son. Okay? And so that's where she has been. She's been the shining star, the sun, the sun of him uh, hiding everything with his uh, blended pleasures. Interesting. In the sky for this reading, then, is the Ace of Pentacles. And this uh, Ace of Pentacles, you know, Pentacles are uh, money. That's, that's all it is in this. In this uh, well, it could be value, too. She has some value for that corporation. But this is described as the Lord, again, the ruler, the Lord of the root of the powers of earth, the Lord of the root of of the powers of earth, and earth being a uh, significant of uh, coin, uh, money. So she's the ruler of the power of the money. Very interesting. That's her aim. Her aim has always been to be in charge of the power of the money. And then the likely outcome uh, for her then as the seven of pentacles, and this is the Lord of success unfulfilled. The Lord of Success unfulfilled. The Seven of Pentacles in the typical deck is telling us, have we done enough? Could we have done more? So see, he, she is the Lord, the ruler of success, but unfulfilled. So that sounds uh, like a, we could work that in as a description for her. So no clarifiers at all needed in that uh, little scenario. Now the third deck that we're going to use for the uh, son, Junior, is uh, the Toth uh, deck uh, by uh, Detalia. Detalia? I don't know how it's pronounced, but it's this guy, this French guy. So uh, here we go. These cards, uh, we already showed them to you, are going to hopefully tell us a story about DJJ. DJ, the son, the namesake, um, the uh, coked up. Um, livid uh, follower, first follower of his dad's every, every uh, whim. So if dad says do it, this guy says, yeah, how far you want me to carry? I need to jump. You tell me how high, pop, and I'll be there. Yeah, this is who he is, but waiting for the king to die. No, no, no doubt in my mind. These cards for him, uh, let's quit take six uh, from this area here. We're going to go one, Two, three, four, five, and six. So let's see how this shapes up for the kid. We'll scoop these up. Again, set them to the side just in case we need clarifiers. Look at that. They want to come out. They're crawling over here. <laughs> so the signifier for the oldest boy, okay, is going to be, so what are you? This is the uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, the 10 of swords, and this is a hard stop. This is death. This is, um, in the, the typical way you see this depicted, is some guy laying on the ground with 10 swords in his back. So this is the end of an era. This is the end of an era, and that's the signifier for the son, Junior. The challenge for this end of an era is uh oh wow so this is uh the queen of cups and it happens to say here uh, le, uh the femme blonde 
So, <laughs> wow. So the, the Queen of Cups, who does the Femme Blonde seem to remind you of? The Queen of Cups. You know, typically the Queen of Cups is telling us that this person is in complete charge of their emotions, of their chalice of, of uh, passion. And uh, you know what? I think the challenge to him is his own sister. His own sister is his challenge. She may walk away with the goods somehow, or at least that's what he's worried about. Uh, the basis of this reading then is the uh, Ace of Cups. So this is a the the base of this reading is always looking for that approval for Daddy to like me better it was never going to happen. You were too much of a challenge to him. The girl he didn't see as someone who could uh, step on his uh, robe uh, as he was ascending the throne. But you, kid, yeah, you, you were never going to get this Ace of Cups. So that's what you've always been striving for, and you were never going to get the recent past for this is <laughs> this is the so the valet of cups this would be the page of cups so this has been the fellow the lowest member of the court i wouldn't say he's the lowest member of the court i think his younger brother is the lowest member of the court but still a low member of the court bringing some emotion bringing some ideas bringing something to the court for for consideration and um that certainly seems like who he is. He's probably bringing deals before this whole presidential situation came along, bringing deals along all the time, hoping this is the one, Dad. This is the biggie pop. In the sky for this reading, then, whoo, is the uh, the sky. In the sky of this reading is is the the sky. Um, uh, it's the universe. Um, I don't know how to. I really, honestly, don't know how to predict that. How to interpret that. So the sky, um, it's a major arcana. Let me see what number it is. It's number f so that would be like, it's in the place of the emperor, but these tough cards don't follow the same um, divinations as the Rider Waite Sisters where the number four is the uh, emperor. So this is the sky and uh, the sky is the limit, I suppose. I may do a clarifier on that one. As a matter of fact, we saw these cards try to crawl over here and there you go. And then the likely outcome for the oldest son is, um, Ten, the ten of coins. Ten of coins is very interesting to be an outcome for him because it predicts, you know, a generational wealth. And it may be that he's the one who picks up the remains of whatever's left. Because let's face it, there may be quite a bit of hidden that we'll never know where it came, went to, or comes from generational wealth. And he might be the one who knows where it is. His younger uh, dodo brother probably doesn't, but he would because he's in consultation with. Uh, the accountant and dad all the time. But let's get a clarifier on this sky. And for that, I'm going to take just four, uh, three cards, uh, one at a time. And if at any point with those three cards, it seems clear that this is the, and these cards have just determined how they want to be, as a matter of fact. They've, they've shown me uh, what they want to do every step of the way here. So let's get a clarifier for the sky. The sky, first card, uh, could be the last card, is going to be the four of wands, the four of wands are celebrations. Four of wands are celebrations, although kind of smallish. The sky celebrations, small celebrations, um, maybe. Uh, let's see what else comes up here for that card. Uh, the next one would be uh, the king of, of, um, of wands, which would be the king of planning. That makes sense to me. And I'm going to go ahead and get the third card, but I see what it meant here. The sky, he wants to be, his aim is to be the, the head of the pack, the, the one in charge of everything, creating all these small celebrations. And the last card, which I don't even think I need it, but we'll pull it, is, um, oh, and this is the uh, page of wands. And um, so the page of wands, again, is the fellow bringing uh, these uh, plans to the court for consideration. Yeah, this all makes perfect sense to me then. So as the sky is aiming for the sky, he wanted to uh, have the celebrations. He wanted to be the king of the planning. He wanted to bring the planning there. So that's who he is in all of this. Um, so that's the sun. Perfectly described, I think, in uh, in these cards. You know, we haven't asked for uh, what's going to happen to them. I've only asked for descriptions of them. And then for the final, for the final, we're going to have uh, cards for mom. So this one I think is going to be the most important and I think I'm going to play out a full Celtic cross for mom here and I'm going to ask a separate kind of a question and that question is was mom 
the uh, the major um, influence in uh, uh, the dad's uh, her son uh, DT senior uh, was she the one who enabled all of this evil to um, to grow she was the one I think who nurtured the uh, devil seed uh, to become exactly who he was and uh, look at that the cards don't even want to go there these are such nice cards but uh, that's who we'll that's what we'll do with this one we're going to look at at mom with a full celtic cross these cards never like to spread out but in this case they've done a, a decent job and there's a few cards here who seem like they're trying to pull out of the pack and i'm going to take those first we'll tell six and we're going to finish with another four on this final uh, draw here so this will be one this will be two this will be three. We'll go over here for four, five, and this one for six. Okay, now we're going to put these aside, but we're going to take four more of these in just a minute. So, Mom, Mom, are you the reason we're dealing with this, this, this thing now? Okay, signifying this card for Mom is uh, the Six of Pentacles. The Six of of Pentacles, and I'm so excited about all those other cards that I can't uh, bring to mind what the Six of Pentacles uh, means. The Six of Pentacles. The Six of Pentacles. I'm going to take a minute and look it up. Why not? You guys don't mind, do you? You're here. Might as well be here while I do this. Pentacles, Pentacles, Pentacles. Where are you in this book? Pentacles, oh, Pentacles, Pentacles. You know, I've got a little cheat sheet over here, as a matter of fact. Um, ones, Cups, Swords, and if I flip this over to my cheat sheet, Pentacles, Six of Pentacles, uh, generally, oh yeah, of course that's what this is. The Six of Pentacles <coughs> is typically depicted as the person who's giving out the money. So she was the one who was in charge of the value in that family. She's the one who decided you're worth something. You're doing what we want. Let me give you some value here. I love you. Everything you're doing is perfect. You're so much better than your other siblings. So she was the distributor of the of the value in that family. On an emotional level, level where you're seeking uh, your mom's approval. The challenge to that for her then is the um, ooh, six again, the six of wands, six of wands. So for some reason, my man is just blank today. I'm going to have to use my cheat sheets uh, all along the way. And the six of wands is a victory, of course. The challenge to distributing this, this, um, this wealth here is that you want, is, is the victory that it brings. Every time you tell them that they're wonderful, that they've got another victory that they have to top the next time. And the basis of this reading is the four of coins and the four of coins is always trying to hold on to your position you know trying to to uh, tamp down your value keep it in place and it's always what you're doing when you're seeking approval and, and looking for celebrations all the time you want to hang on to that celebration and then go on to the next one what does mom say i did right and let's do something for mom's approval again uh, some would argue that it's actually dad uh, that was uh, the one he was seeking approval from but I think deep down it was the admiration of his mom that kept him going in the past of this reading is the uh, daughter of cups so this would be like the page of cups the lowest of the court cards and uh, so in that family I would imagine that she was the lowest of the royal court in that family it was her and uh, and uh, the father was the king and so there was lots of positions to fill in between there, but she just was the page of cups making some emotional uh, contributions, uh, pushes uh, in the directions that she wanted to go. And then in the sky for mom uh, was the mother of pentacles. She wanted to be, of course, the mother of, of all the value. She birthed these treasures. The likely outcome is that the nine of, of wands, and that is a hard path, difficult plans that have to be uh, mounted, uh, uh, tackled, overcome to get to your destination, man. So we'll go over this quickly and then we'll go on to the self of her. So perhaps she's uh, risen to a place in the collective consciousness, consciousness where she uh, recognizes uh, what she did in this family and that's uh, somehow uh, moving her on to her next uh, phase if it hasn't already but uh, so she was the distributor of the value 
um, she wanted to um, uh, plan celebrations or create celebrations around uh, those uh, earmarks or uh, landmarks that she would she would distribute that she would uh, mark along the way. Uh, the basis of all of that for her was holding on to her value, always being the one that had this emotional um, uh, influence on that family, on that court. She had to be the mother of the value. She was the mother of the value. She birthed all of those those uh, kids, and then it was always going to be hard-fought plans to follow. But the self of her, the self of this woman, and I'm going to have to cut these cards to go deep for the self. And the self of her was the three of coins. Uh, the three of coins was is the one who is always looking for others to join them in their creation of this of this uh, this uh, mountain. This obstacle. So she uh, was the three of coins who was always looking for companions to help her create this um, this uh, situation that she did create with those greedy children. Um, the um, environment that she was in at that time then is going to be, oh my gosh, I really don't like upside down cards, but uh, th this is the fool. The fool, when it's upright, is telling us that we're uh, starting a journey and uh, we're uh, stepping out into a brave new world. But it seems what happened to, to her is that she was uh, uh, stagnated in her journey. And, uh, and she couldn't move on except through the children. And when one of them rose to be the most uh, golden son, um, that's where she got stuck in praising that kid. And then the um, hopes and the fears are the son of Pentacles. Look at that. If she's the mother of Pentacles... Her hope and her fear, whether she knew it or not, was that she had created the son of Pentacles. And then the final outcome for this reading is the mother of swords. And the mother of swords is the mother of, of, of and I can't say truth, I can't say justice, just the mother of the rules that it would take to maintain your standing in this uh, insane evil empire. Wow. So that was the reading today. We did four people. We did a big one at the end on mom. And, um, you know, look at them over again and see what you think and what your interpretations of the, uh, of the cards are as opposed to mine. And then uh, use your better judgment. And I usually try to bring some compassion to these readings, but this family was not a compassionate family, and uh, I couldn't do it. Anyway, I'm Mark. This is my journey through tarot. Thank you so much for coming along. I really love it when you come over and, uh, and we make a little exploration uh, off into the wilderness. And uh, come back tomorrow and we'll do it again. It should be fun. So, ciao for now.